Hello YouTubers, this is Cessna Ace back again with another video. I have picked up quite a number of Disney collector pins, so I thought I would share them with you. There are about 12 here. Most I picked up yesterday, or the day before yesterday actually, we went to the Food and Wine Festival at Epcot. So they have one every year. And they're forever adding new pavilions. Now for those of you who are familiar with uh, Epcot, you know that there is the World Pavilion in the center of which is a man-made lake. And then you go around and there are permanent pavilions for several countries. Uh, the US, the UK, Canada, Mexico, China, uh, Norway, Germany, Italy, France, etc. But during the Food and Wine Festival, they put, out, put up temporary pavilions for some of those countries and more. And what you can do is what we did. We pre-purchased money or credits, if you want to put it that way, and had it put on a debit card, which you wear around your wrist, and then when you go to pay, you just take it off your wrist and hand it to them, and they swipe it, and you're done. And they give you a receipt that not only shows you what you just bought, but the amount that's left on your card. After you run out of money, which is what we did eventually, we switched to cash, but anyway, you get this uh, passport. It's also cool, by the way, that they have people working the pavilions that are from the countries represented. In Mexico, you're going to have Mexicans working there. In Germany, you're going to have the uh, Germans working there. Same for Italy, France, um, and so forth. Now, Missed Australia. Now, this show is going on until the end of uh, November, so we're going to go back at least one more time. But Missed uh, Australia, Brazil, Argentina, the Caribbean, hit Mexico twice. I got a grilled ribeye taco and flan. There's the stamp. We don't drink, so no alcoholic beverages were purchased. Saw quite a few inebriated um, college-age kids there, by the way. Made it. Didn't make it to Scandinavia, but made it to China and to South Korea. Missed South Africa, missed the Chiefs Pavilion, missed the Brewers Collection Pavilion, uh, made it to the German Pavilion, and I tried both goulash soup and a Nuremberger sausage and a pretzel roll. Made it to Poland. I got kibasa. Missed Italy. The Fife and Drum Pavilion, the Hops and Barley Pavilion, the Singapore Pavilion, the Japan Pavilion, the New Zealand Pavilion. Made it to uh, Morocco where I tried baklava. Missed Portugal, Belgium, made it to both France and Ireland. The top choice there is uh, escargot, and strangely enough, well I got the creme brulee. Strangely enough, when we were living in Germany and we were doing a lot of travel throughout Europe, including France, I had the opportunity to eat uh, escargot in a French restaurant, and I passed. Then we moved back to the States and we were living in Renton, which is a suburb of Seattle, and that's when I ate escargot one and only time in my life. And, okay, Ireland. Uh, Miss Canada, Greece, the de Desserts and Champagne Pavilion, the Hawaiian Pavilion, and we missed the Craft Beers Pavilion. But we're going to go back at least one more time, and possibly two, before the 2011 Food and Wine Festival ends. There'll be another one next year, with another passport. Disability Pass. Okay, now my wife had picked me up some pins 
at um, Disney World when she went on a day trip and I couldn't go. I can't handle day trips any longer for health reasons. And she picked me up another Star Wars pen. Get a taste of the dark side. She also knows that I'm trying to get a complete set of, of pins, or at least one pin, for each attraction I've ever been on in my life, including those that are no longer attractions. And um, Disney does release pins for attractions that no longer exist. Anyway, she picked me up this limited edition Peter Pan pin. And this limited edition Hot Invention pin. Okay, now the pins that I picked up. Oh, she also picked up this for me. It's not a pin, really, more like a button. Okay, I, first of all, I purchased a Roger Rabbit they have pins that are dated for the year they are released and good luck finding them in a shop there at Disney World once the next year rolls around they disappear poof in the December 2011 pins are going to still be there. Beginning of January, you're not going to be able to find any. At least that's been my experience. This is a 2011 pin, limited edition, for Halloween with Chip and Dale. And if you can read that, it says it glows in the dark. Okay. I also bought a couple of mystery pin packs. Each one of these contains one hero and one villain pen. The cool thing about Disney is their um, mystery pen things. They don't just take pens that haven't sold very well and slap them in a box. They are pens that are designed to be sold this way. And so you're not going to find most of the pens you find this way anywhere anyway else. This is the villain pin I got which is Scar from The Lion King. And the hero Mowgli from The Jungle Book. Or Mowgli, however you want to say it. Here's another attraction pin for Captain EO with Michael Jackson. That was an attraction, and then it was pulled out, and now it's back after many years' absence at Epcot. Captain EO. 3D uh, mini movie with Michael Jackson and. If I remember correctly, George Lucas wrote the script and maybe produced it. And, um, what's his name? Francis Ford Coppola directed it. Captain EO. Okay, I also got a Haunted Mansion mystery box containing two pins. For twelve ninety-five, which is a pretty good deal. And notice they're shaped like a coffin. The backboards are. My daughter removes the backboards. I don't. But you can do whatever you want to do. Chip and Dale.
since Disney discovered that Chip and Dale are very popular in Japan, they have been coming out with more and more Chip and Dale pins. Um, Disney World is a favorite destination among people from all over the world, and there, yes, are a lot of Japanese that visit the park. Let's see, I also got some pins that, in order to qualify for these pins, you have to purchase at least $30 worth of pins to be able to get one. I purchased enough pins, I was able to get two. These are what they call black and white photo pins, and they go for $2.95, I believe it was, if you've spent the requisite $30. It's one that I got. Although I confused the lady behind me in, at Epcot because I pulled out my annual pass and showed it to her and I got 10 or 15% off. The one behind the counter showed it to me. And the one behind me said, well, no, she got the same discount with her hotel card and no, annual pass holders. Now, the annual pass, premium uh, pass, you get even more of a discount. An extra 10%, my wife told me. Anyway, Mickey Mouse. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention briefly, if I can, is a lot of people know that, watch my channel, that I'm big into pinball machines. And if you know where to go, there are a lot of pinball machines at Disney World. Some of the parks have an arcade, and most, if not all, of the uh, resorts have arcades. Now, at the uh, arcade that's inside the Magic Kingdom, which is right off of Space Mountain, there's a whole line of pinball machines. There was Elvis by Stern. Next to it, was uh, Indiana Jones by Stern. Not based on any one Indiana Jones film, by the way, but on all four. Next to it, power that sucker up and Sega! Mary Shelley's Frankenstein by Sega. And you could, with that game, you can choose either to listen to sound from the film, including voice uh, clips and music and so forth, or you can choose to hear the song Frankenstein by the Edgar Winter Group. Yeah, that song. And then they had uh, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, which you're going to find everywhere that has a pinball machine at Disney World. That machine is everywhere. And then beside that, there was a Roller Coaster Tycoon by Stern. It didn't interest me a whole lot, but there might be some people out there who like it. It was well done. It just didn't appeal to me. And then they had uh, two machines that were from Williams that were part of the Williams uh, Video 2000, I think it was called, project. One I see a lot at various places that have pinball machines, and that's Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. And theirs is, is an immaculate condition. And beside it was another one from the same series that was in a condition that I have never run into before. And that was it was a Martian invasion themed machine. I can't remember if it was licensed on Mars Attacks. It might have just been a generic Mars uh, invasion type thing. But it was well done. I enjoyed playing it. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. I'm running out of time. So I need to jump ahead to yesterday. We were getting ready to leave our resort. So I went into the arcade there, and they had two machines, pinball machines, I mean. The first one I barely registered, which was Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean by Stern. Beside that was the brand new Tron Legacy. Top, 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 top machine. And what I like about it is you swipe your card, which is similar to the way the Dave & Buster cards work. You just slide them. You don't get one credit. You don't get two credits. You don't get three credits. You get four credits. Every time you 
just 25 points deducted from your card, which is equivalent to 25 cents, and you get four plays. And I'm out of time, and so until next time, stay awesome.